Hello guys and welcome to the tutorial. I'm going to be showing you today how to make POM. So POM is Parallax Occlusion Mapping. Now it's what you see in this image here on my desktop. This render I did of the brick that's used in Poultra Pure PBR. Basically POM is, uh, it simulates steps by extruding, but not really extruding, it extrudes inward of the block instead of tessellation, tessellation extrudes outward. So that's the difference. Uh, Minecraft for shaders we use POM, not only because one, it's, it gives more detail to it, but it also, if you add tessellation, which mind you, extrudes outward, you will get these giant gaps in between the blocks, and it just looks god-awful. So that's why we use POM. So today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to make POM for Minecraft. Now there's a bunch of tutorials on how to do this for other games, for Unreal Engine, for those kind of things, but there's no specific tutorial for Minecraft because no one's, I guess, figured out how to do it properly or they just don't care to share how to do it. Like, I know Realistico, I think he knows how to do it, but I don't think he knows how to do it right because he ends up with infinite depth. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do that, and it's pretty easy. Um, so first of all, you're going to want to get GIMP, uh, it's a image manipulation software. It's free. You can go download it on their website. I'll put a download link in the description, so you can just go down, go there and download it, so you don't have the risk of accidentally downloading something that's wrong, and you get a virus. Um, so you just need GIMP. Well, actually, you need two things. You need the GIMP, and then you need bitmap to material. Now you can use the trial, or you can basically use any software that will generate a normal map and a height map, uh, like uh, a bitmap to material, shader map, um, all those ones. I think even GIMP has a plugin to do it, but I'm going to be using this one because this is the most accurate way. Um, and this is a paid program; it's paying, you have to pay monthly. So mind you, it for better results, use this, but you will be paying for it. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you don't want to pay for it, go ahead and go to one of your torrent websites and do illegal things. Because Although I don't recommend doing that because you can get viruses. So don't do that unless you know what you're doing. But still don't do that. I'm not recommending piracy. Keeping my YouTube channel up here. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to just get an example texture that I have um, that may or may not be used in the pack. So... First of all, you're going to want to get your bitmap to material or anything that you have to make the, the normal map. Uh, so you're going to want to drag the texture in, if you're using this, load as the main input, and there you have your, main, your texture on the cube. Now, the main things that you need for making the height map, uh, or palm, is the normal and then the height. Now these things are very important. Uh, you can manipulate in here, you can manip manipulate the uh, how strong the normal intensity is here. It's the default is 16. You can turn that up if you want a lot of depth or turn that way down if you don't want any depth. Uh, the default is really good. I used to turn it up all the way, but then it was just way too deep and it caused problems with shaders and stuff. So I'm leaving at 16 now, plus it just gives it a more natural feel. Um, so anyway, once you have your normal map, you just want to export it. For me, it's just save as bitmap. I'm going to go to the, the uh, Dropbox and save in here. I'll just call it uh, test underscore n. Now, when you have that saved, you just want to go and grab your height map and then do the same thing. Save it. Uh, I like to save it as underscore h because it's a height and then the other one is a normal. So just apply the first letter accordingly. So now that we have those, we can actually close out bitmap to material because we don't need that anymore. So once you're done, you just close that out. Now, in GIMP, uh, and I really recommend using GIMP because it is by far the best editing, image editing program other than Photoshop. Photoshop is above this and tools and uh, tweaks and of by far, by far everything else. Uh, this is uh, like second to it. Uh, I like what it can do, and it's free. So yeah, get this one if you can't get the Photoshop. Now in here, you just want to take your image and just drag it in. And you're going to want to get the normal map first. So just throw in your normal map. It'll load up. Looks good, right? Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your height map and drag in and drop. 
Now you're going to have these two things here, and they should be under the layers. You should have this by default. If you don't, you can go to Windows, and then go to the, uh, the dockable dialogs, and you can click on Layers, and it'll pull that up. It's pretty easy, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so then, what you're going to want to do is make sure you're clicked on the test, on, well, your normal map, for me, test underscore n. Then you want to go come over here to the layer, then go down to mask, add a layer mask, then transfer layers alpha channel. Now this is very important. Do not select any other or else it will not work. Now that you have that, you see you have an additional white box next to your normal map. Now that means that you can take the alpha from another image and put it into your, this image. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the test underscore h or underscore h or whatever your height map is called. Do control x to cut. You'll see it gets removed from the layers. That's fine. You're going to want that. Now you're going to want hold alt and then click on the white, the white square that ne is next to the normal map. That will put a green border around it and you'll see a little green border in here around the white. Now what you're going to want to do is for some reason, I don't know why this happens, but you're going to want to paste twice, and you can paste using Control v Now you'll see you'll have the white box will be filled with the height map, and then you'll have this floating section pasted layer. We don't need that. Just right-click on it, then delete layer. That's it. Now we have just the normal and the height next to each other. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed, and you're right. There hasn't been. There's nothing changed. So now you're going to want to go to the layer, the mask, and actually apply the mask. So now you're saying, okay, we've done all these steps, now take the alpha and plug it into the normal. So once you apply that, boom, that's it. You have your height. Now, the more transparency you have, the deeper it will be. So mind, take that in mind. If you have it like how it is right now, it will be extremely deep. It will look horrible. It will look realistico. So we do not want that. We want a realistic height. Now, what you, what I like to do is I like to get the re erase tool. Um, I like to change the size to so it engulfs the entire thing. So it goes around it. It surrounds it. It once I click, it can get everything. Now, you're thinking, why are you going to use the Erase Tool? Now, this Erase Tool has a wonderful thing. Um, and make sure also your brush, just change that to the pixel. Uh, you can just click on the little icon next to the brush and then select the old pixel. That's pretty much it. Size, uh, just drag it up or type in the value larger than your image size and make sure that surrounds it. Um, but anyway, you want to select hard edge and uh, where, where is it? Uh, duh, 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 duh. I think I lost it. Oh, anti-erase. Here it is. Hard edge and anti-erase. Now, anti-erase, by the name, it will un-erase what you have. So if you have a lot of alpha, it will remove some of that alpha based on your opacity settings. Now, the opacity settings are up here. This controls how much of the alpha is removed. So if it's at 100, all of the alpha will be removed. And we don't want that. We want just a little bit. We want to t send that down to a 70, because 70 is realistic. This is how you do it. So when you have that, all those things, just look up on my screen. You can see them all here. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you don't like how they are, you can always tweak it. Some blocks uh, re require you to do this twice. Uh, but for now, I think it should be fine with once. So when you have that, just click, and then boom. You'll notice it removes some of the alpha. Now, you may think, oh, but, but Josh, you removed all the alpha. No, I didn't. There's actually still alpha in this image. Even if we can't see it, there still is alpha data. You can even see in this little section here that's transparent, and you can see the gray and white checkerboard in the back. That's because there's still alpha. So... Now that we have our image, we're just going to want to go File, and Export As, or you can just overwrite it. So I would like to overwrite Task underscore N. Now, you'll see the normal has been accordingly updated, and there is our normal. Now, uh, I will show you how it looks in-game, just so I can show you that it works properly. So let me open up that. 
Um, I will just also rename this uh, really quickly uh, while this loads to be clay clay and then the tests make sure this also is the name of the actual block in the game or you won't, won't see it at all because it will be like there's no such thing as this so I'm just going to name it clay just so I can show you again this probably won't be in the actual pack it's just for uh, tutorial purposes now that I updated my pack and now once this loads when we go in the game it should be there I might have to reload okay so our Minecraft's unloading um, now uh, I'm just gonna go to multiplayer just because I can and I'm gonna go to the continuum server now uh, when I'm here uh, I have to go oh god I have to go all the way back uh, slash kill Kill out, uh, respawn. I think no, it some turn off keep inventory. Oh well. So now, if we go to my texturing area and go to clay, which is somewhere, there's so many blocks I easily lose track. Here it is. So here's our clay. Now, mind you, I'm using a pack that does not have palm. Now, it will look like this. It will still have the normal map. It will still look like it has depth, but there's no 3D effect. So this this is a 512 by 512 pack with Palm. No shader supports this other than Continuum so far. There may be added support later on for other shader packs, but for now it's Continuum only, and you will have to use Continuum only. So, you're going to want to go to your options, video settings for me, shaders, and continuum. And I'm going to load that up, because now I have palm, and there we go. You'll notice there's now 3D depth, and everything, and it looks perfect. You can see that the value I set is realistic, not too much, uh, not too, not, not too much depth, and not too little. It's just the perfect value. I have tweaked this perfectly, and if you follow along, as I showed you, you will get the best and most realistic palm. So, now that you have that, you can go and create palm uh, add-ons for any of your favorite resource packs out there, and you can convert them and everything. Uh, if you want to learn how to do PBR, go check out Continuum Shaders, uh, their YouTube, and they have a tutorial on how to do that there. Um, I'm not going to do one here because it's pretty, uh, they have already one there and it's pretty self-explanatory to follow theirs. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and now hopefully you can make your own palm. If you, again, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, just f feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. I'll comment back and say and answer your questions if you have any, if you're having pro problems with their being lines or anything. That's pretty self-explanatory and I can easily tell you why that's happening. And most of the time that's because your resolution settings are set wrong for your shader pack. And also, if you want to change your shader pack resolution for your textures, and you're using the Continuum 1.2.1 PBR, you're going to want it because you want PBR. PBR is what this pack is. So you're going to want to go to Shader Options, and then you're going to want to change your texture pack resolution to 512. It's easy as that. And then when you have that done, it'll look like this, and it'll look perfect and beautiful until there'll be no lines whatsoever, and you'll have the most beautiful beautiful thing in the entire Minecraft world right here. So anyway, I'll see you guys on the next tutorial or live stream, whatever it may be. And also, if you like what I'm doing here, and you'll want to donate, go to my website and click that donation at the bottom of the thing. It really helps me out, helps me put out these videos. Uh, I use some of the money to get this new ed editing software so I can actually do these videos properly without using horrible software um, so yeah and it helps a lot because again these softwares do our our monthly payment thing so it really helps out with that um, so yeah and also if you just want to let me know how I'm doing just feel free to comment saying good job I really like your work it really really inspires me to continue this so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed anyway I'll see you guys on the next episode of whatever I may do. Anyway, see ya.